So I've lived here in San Diego my entire life, born and raised, lived in a few different cities, went to college out here. This is all minus, I lived up in Tahoe for about eight months or so doing this ski bum thing. But other than that, right here in San Diego my entire life. I uh, grew up in a little bit of Vista. Oh, I actually did live up in uh, Auburn, up by Sacramento for about six months. Other than that, I have lived here. So now you know the backstory. Vista, San Marcos, JC over in San Marcos, went to San Diego State, lived down there for a bit, Pacific Beach, Encinitas. So kind of moving around different parts, but I have never really left for too long and I don't really plan on leaving. So in this video, we're gonna get into why I have decided to live my entire life here in San Diego uh, and just kind of share with you guys some insights into what living here might be like, what the kind of the experience might be here like. So if you are thinking about moving, you'll have a good idea of kind of what to expect when you live out here. So let's get into it right now. So one of the number one things, especially if you're thinking about moving out here, why people move out here, the most, or the number one reason we hear is the climate. Obviously it's gorgeous here. It is not always perfect today. I got a pretty darn perfect day. Let me kick you around here real quick and show you cruising down the beach. But even out here, you can see kind of a little fog bank going on. If I pan you, you can't really see it, but over that way where I came from inland, it's actually a little cloudy today. I think it was, it's about 64 right now on the beach, but inland it was about 60, 61 degrees. And it's typically flip-flop where you have maybe a little cooler at the beach, maybe a little warmer inland. Got the tide coming up right now, so hopefully <laughs> I don't get too wet. But San Diego, obviously climate is great. It's like the number one reason, like I said, people are moving here. And there are some things you gotta know though, when it's not always perfect. Like this weekend, we have something called Santa Ana's moving in where it's these warmer winds coming off the mountains to the east. Usually we have winds going from the water inland. It's coming from this direction going to the coast warmer winds, getting super dry. If you got allergies, beware. That's the time it really kicks in. It's blowing all kinds of stuff around. So we have that. Cassie, who you see on this channel a lot as well, he's been a little bummed lately because these last few years, we've had a little bit more rain than usual. And I'm talking, okay, sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's cloudy, but it's been literally overcast for weeks at a time, maybe even a month at a time. And so, you know, we're not in Seattle where you do kind of get that typically for longer stretches of time, but we have seen that over the past few years. I don't know if it's something new, if we're just having different weather patterns running through right now, but you will have that coming through. It's beautiful now. So Cassie, he'll be on the next video, but he'll be happy. I think right now we're I'm kind of in the springtime. We're in mid-March. This is gonna be like one of the best times for the beach. This is when we have kind of, I think the most gorgeous days. It's starting to warm up. Now warming up, I mean, never gets too cold anyways, but warming up for us. Even I was gonna film with the shirt on today, but it's a little breezy down here. So threw on the utility flannel. Just keep one in your car. You, you never know when you night me because it might be hot during the day. I would say most nights it does cool off significantly. So it gets nice and cool in the nighttime. And so we're cruising towards, this is Solana Beach right up here. You got Cardiff right on the edge right here. And typically the beach times, obviously you can go during the summers, but even during then, May, June, you get nice and overcast for long stretches of time. So even if it is nice inland, as you're cruising the beach, you're gonna hit potentially like a big, not necessarily a fog bank, but a big marine layer where it is much cooler during those times. And another thing, if you're living in kind of older style houses, maybe 70s, even 80s, sometimes you're not, depending on where you're coming from, you might, you're not gonna have AC in all the homes here. Definitely all the newer homes, most of the newer homes are gonna have it. But as you live, I'm kind of more coastal. I don't have AC at my house. And some summer nights it does get pretty darn hot. So we got the fans cranking. Cassie's a little far, farther inland in a newer community and he's got AC, but also he doesn't use it all that often. I was chatting with somebody from Austin this past weekend at a birthday party and they were telling me about kind of Austin and some of the summer days are just more or less unbearable. Not as bad as like, I think he was saying Houston or Dallas where you're even getting more humid. While we are humid here, it's not like, 
I've been to Florida and you know, you're just walking like this on a nice warm day. You're just sweat and drenched. It doesn't typically seem to get like that here all that often. So climate, it's comfortable, I would say, for the most part. You're gonna go through a few different layers, t-shirt, jacket. Obviously, if you've seen this channel, I got the Datagonia jacket. You rock that when it gets a little bit cooler than this, maybe low 60s. So I don't know, I probably could have put it on this morning, but that's, you know, standard attire here, standard issue attire here in San Diego. But it's not just all about climate here. That's like not the only thing that's kept me here. Like I said, love the snow. You have access to the snow pretty quick. You have the deserts out east. That's what I'll get into in a little bit later sections, but there's also a lot more that I'm really digging about living right here in San Diego. It's a ton of different locations here in San Diego. Like I said, when I was growing up, there's a lot of different little areas where I grew up, San Marcos. I've seen a ton of growth over these past 25-ish years, 30 years, but a lot of San Diego has not seen a ton of growth because a lot of the suburbs are built out. A lot of the areas are just not a lot, a ton of land. Yes, there's new developments. Yes, there's new master plan communities. Yes, there's infills and that kind of thing. But for the most part, there's a lot of well-established communities, especially as you get more coastal. A lot of those areas are built out now, like where I'm walking right now, Cardiff, pretty much all built out. When you get to the next city up, Encinitas, you're gonna see some of those. There's like a new community called Fox Point Farms. It's a smaller, community, a bunch of townhomes. They're kind of building it and there's a restaurant on there. Anyways, it's a really cool community. Uh, I'll be coming up here soon. If you want more info, let me know actually. But that's like as big as the new constructions get. Back in the like late 90s, early 2000s is when you saw a lot of growth here in San Diego, especially North County, San Alejo Hills was built out. A little bit before that, all the La Costa areas were all built out. And then you will see as you look at new construction now, there's not a ton up here in North County, unless you go further north up to like Fallbrook. There's some new communities up there, kind of up in Valley Center. Park Circle is a bigger community up there. Down south in Santee, you're gonna find a few. Down even further south, Chula Vista area, you'll find a few, but a lot of it is built out and depending on what city you're in, some are gonna be more restrictive. So it's like, as you're exploring cities, if you want something that is like built out, you're not gonna see a ton of change. Locals, if you're watching this, you're gonna say there's been a ton of change. Obviously, everything changes over time, but I think San Diego, you're not seeing like, once again, back to Texas. So I watch these other real estate agents in Texas and they're covering all these new construction communities from the city center. And then as you go to the suburbs, it's flat. You just have a ton of different new, brand new build communities, these master plan communities. It's not really the case here. There's a handful, but mostly, you're looking at uh, kind of used, not used, <laughs> pre-owned resale single family homes. And one other thing with the location, with the growth, with all that kind of stuff, when you do pick a location, maybe it's a con. I don't know if other places are like this, but it might be just our situation too, growing up, you know, have a bunch of family around, that kind of things. So I got a family now. So once you find your location, you are kind of gonna live in your bubble. So, you know, kids are playing soccer, right around their city. The schools, if you can find one, there's a lot of schools within communities where they're walkable, which I think is a huge benefit because, I don't know, I just love walking the kids to school. It's nice and easy. And there's a bunch of different communities where as they're building out communities, they're putting in schools right in the center of them. So, and over these past 20 years, while I had said there wasn't been a ton of change, that's one thing that has, I think, changed a lot is the schools as far as a lot of the older ones have been revamped when they did have a lot of the you know, construction and that kind of stuff in the early 2000s with these newer communities, a lot of new schools were built as well. So while there are some that have been well established that are here forever, as you're looking at schools, look beyond the school ratings, start talking to people, start calling the schools. We have clients right now who are actually reaching out to other 
schools to figure out, okay, is this one gonna be best? Is this one gonna be best for your specific situation, for your kids? Because it's like, yeah, you can look at a rating, you can read the online stuff, but until you actually dive in, what programs are you looking for? What other aspects of a school are you looking for? Do you want it to be walkable from your house? You can't really, you know, that's another, I think, a, a big aspect here. You're living in your bubble. We say everything's 20 minutes because we don't go too far. I live in North County, San Diego. I don't go downtown all that often. You know, obviously we're in real estate, so we're showing places all over the city, but as far as recreation and stuff, a lot of it, if we're living in North County, a lot of it's gonna be right here in North County. If you're living down in Santee's, El Cajon's, East County, a lot of it's gonna be out there. Metro, North Parks, Little Italy's, that's the walkable area. So you're probably gonna be right there a lot. South Bay, Chula Vista's, all that kind of stuff. So you get the point. If you're living in your little area, your little bubble, that's a lot of times where you're gonna stay. But you get out, I'm gonna get into some of the benefits of San Diego being so big here in the next little section as well. And real quick, back to growth. Like I said, San Marcos growing up there, ton of change over these past 20 years. And if you ask locals, yes, everything has changed over these past 20, 25 years and beyond. But that growth I think is minimal compared to a lot of other places. And hasn't really been, uh, you know, something that makes me want to go, ooh, I want to leave. It's getting too crowded. Yes, it is getting more crowded. The freeways have been expanded. They're trying to mitigate some of that as you're cruising through, uh, you know, expanding carpool lanes, building new ways to get through areas. But honestly, I don't think it's too bad. And this one might be my favorite part of San Diego. And part of the reason I don't have to leave is because there's so much to explore here from hiking to beaches to restaurants to things to do to everything in between even though i've lived here my whole life finding new things all the time like i said you're going to live in your like little pocket but once you get outside of there there's a ton of cool places to check out a few years ago my goal was to run a thousand miles and i was out and about on a lot of these different trails i was trying to mix it up do different trails every day because it was running every single day. And you find so many new areas, even when we're showing property sometimes, I'll be out there and then, you know, after showing the property, we see a lot of, you know, houses and stuff, obviously, being real estate agents, but you don't necessarily get to dive in deep and explore these specific neighborhoods. So getting on foot, cruising around after a showing, do a, a quick, you know, a few miles around, kind of check out the trails, maybe run down the main street, all that kind of stuff. There's just a lot of different areas to explore. And so, like I said, that's one of my goals this year, even though I've lived here forever, is to explore more hiking wise. We're in one of the kind of like, there's, there's a bunch of different, there's like little local hiking trails that they specifically put in the neighborhoods. There's some open space, there's some bigger trails you know, out and this is kind of like a mid-sized trail. I'm like Manchester Preserve right here in Encinitas. It's kind of similar to a little bit smaller than like Calavera up in Carlsbad. But there's just a lot of these little different areas that you'll find here in San Diego. If you want like, this is kind of not within a neighborhood, but you can see houses around that kind of stuff. If you go further east or Palomar Mountain, which is somewhat close, you'll find like hiking in the woods and stuff. So it's not too far to, to get out and, and explore. Like, like I said, there's just a ton out here to explore. And real quick on the mountains, I know we like the climate here in San Diego, but if you do want to go check out some mountains, we were just up at Big Bear last weekend or not even last weekend, it was just like a Monday. We went out up on a Monday, came back on a Tuesday, quick one day trip. It's like a three hour drive from here. You can hit the mountain pretty quick. It's not like these, you know, it's not like Tahoe mountains or Colorado or Utah or anything like that, but it's a cool little mountain. The little guys put them in ski school, cruise around, check it out, get an Airbnb for the night and explore there. If you want like bigger mountains, we're looking into going to Brian Head out in Utah next year, probably about an eight hour drive from here. And then somewhere else we've been a lot is Mammoth. It's about a six and a, probably about a seven hour drive from San Diego. And they got a little brewery in there. It's a cool little spot anyways, but a nice, a big mountain. So that's like a lot of people from San Diego. That's kind of like not necessarily their home mountain, but they will go to that Mammoth a lot. I think there's actually uh, flights that go there as well. And then obviously the beaches right here in San Diego, there's a ton of different beaches, 
ton of different vibes. You got cliffs, you got big open beaches, you got kids. If you want some kid friendly beaches, we got those as well. I've surfed a lot of different areas. I don't know if I could call myself a surfer anymore. It's been quite a while. Uh, another goal this year, get out in the water a little more, but a ton of surf breaks, a ton of beaches, a ton of cool spots. We don't have a ton of like, restaurants and stuff right on the beach but there's also a ton of restaurants to explore so most of these cities most of these areas most of these neighborhoods are going to have some sort of like little downtown area so where there's there's unfortunately some turnover in there but with the turnover you're getting uh, new spots opening up quite frequently uh, a lot of local spots so you got your chain restaurants here and there but a lot of local spots little one-offs like over in lucadia they have, I think it's called Lucadia Co. They have started this little restaurant conglomerate, I guess, where they got Corner Pizza, they have Hamburger Hut, they have Valentina Restaurant. Valentina, fantastic restaurant. If you wanna go on a lovely little date night over in Lucadia. And they have some other projects in the works. So you'll see these little restaurant groups, you know, that, like not chains at all, but just these little groups here in San Diego. And I don't know, we're not really known for as a, a foodie town, but if you're moving here, you're gonna get into Mexican food. That's like definitely my favorite food. You have a ton of different styles from just little quick little taco shops to, you know, more uh, sit down eating style. Mostly my go-to is maybe like a drive-through, grab a burrito or something. Uh, I don't, I actually don't know the last time I actually went to a, like a sit-down Mexican food restaurant, but you got plenty of those as well. And it's just, I mean, it's fantastic. You're gonna find the places you like. I give you a big list of stuff, but most of the time you're gonna be finding places right around where you're living. So you're gonna find your little local spot as well. And another thing about diff different areas to explore it might be a little hard if you're trying to find the right place to move because San Diego County is gigantic. Most of the places you're gonna live climate-wise are gonna be like coastal or inland. You're not really going into deserts or the mountains too much, uh, but there's just a ton of different little neighborhoods and everyone's gonna have its different little vibes. Some are gonna be kind of like well-established neighborhoods, kind of old school neighborhoods. Some are gonna be like newer communities with new community amenities, big community parks. Some are gonna be, even some of the old established ones have like really cool HOA, you know, like HOA community centers with pools and tennis courts and a lot of pickleball courts we're seeing right now. And within those neighborhoods, you're gonna find a lot of different types of housing, townhomes, condos, uh, single family homes, small, large, you know, everything in between. And it just, if you're moving out here, you're gonna have your choice. Obviously it's gonna come down to price point. That's one of the cons, one of the negatives about living here is the price points are up there and they're rising every year. I just made a video on our other channel about how San Diego had the highest appreciation uh, year over year from last December to this December. And yeah, it is what it is. But once you get established in here, it is well worth it. And from here as well, there's a lot, it's a good jumping off spot for like a lot of road trips. So if you want to go up the coast, you wanna go check out Big Sur, you wanna go camping, there's a lot of really good camping spots within an hour or two of San Diego. If you want to drive to Vegas, I'm flying now, but we used to, there was a time we did used to drive out there. Palm Springs is a few hours drive. You can go to so many different places and so many road trips. And even within San Diego, you can take little road trips within San Diego back to Palomar Mountain. There's a cool little place. It's kind of like glamping and stuff, but it's called Bailey's and they have little cabins up there, little yurts, little that kind of things. That's probably like hour, hour and a half away. You know, a little road trip, little, you can do a day trip. You can do a few days up there, camp, whatever. There's just so much to explore. And even as a lifelong local, I'm still finding spots pretty much every day. And one of the biggest reasons that I'll probably never leave San Diego is the lifestyle. It's easy going. There's always something to do, but you never feel like you have to do stuff. So even though we have this beautiful park, I'm at Encinitas Community Park right now. Come here a lot with the kids, cruise around, skate park on the other side, plenty to do, ball fields. During the weekends, this place is packed, but there's also times like you're just hanging at home. Yeah, maybe it's a gorgeous day out. You don't have to go to the beach. Just hang out, relax, hang out at your own pad. You got pool. Uh, pools aren't year-round out here, so you do have the, the cold season too, but 
you got a spa, maybe kick that on, hang out. You know, a little family barbecue kind of thing. So it's just really good. And there's like always, like I said, something to do. Something we recently did was get some Legoland passes. It's right up in Carlsbad. And we've brought the kids there in the past where it's like birthdays, it's kind of like big event kind of thing. Now we have a pass, you go like two or three times and it pays for itself, but uh, my wife's brought them there after school. Go trade some Lego figures, go hang out. Cassidy's got tickets out to the, uh, season tickets out to the safari park. So they'll cruise out there for a few hours, grab a beer, walk around, check everything out, out there. He's also got Disneyland passes. So there's plenty to do, but like I said, you never feel like you have to do stuff. And so like I mentioned, I have two kids. There's not fully into sports yet, but I got one, he's doing jujitsu. The other guy is doing his own thing, but Casty, I know he's super busy with sports all week, you know, coaching baseball, they have soccer. They got all kinds of stuff going on. So the, the, that kind of scene, there's a ton, since we are year round, you could pick and choose what sports you wanna play year round. My other guys, he's also playing soccer right now. And with the weather, uh, okay, this year, yes, there has been some rainouts, but for the most part, kind of year-round sports. Baseball is huge. The, when I mentioned this field was packed uh, when we came the other day, lacrosse all throughout here. So as a parent, you're gonna be meeting new people coming out here, a lot of friendly folks out here, a lot of people from everywhere. And if you're moving here from somewhere else, you're in good company because there's a lot of people who have moved here to San Diego from a lot of different places. So we've helped clients, we're helping some clients in Austin right now. We've helped Seattle, kind of the Virginia. We got Chicago, we got everywhere, a lot of different places. And so you're gonna meet a lot of cool people when you do move out here. And just back to lifestyle, you know, something that we did over the weekend, which if you're living up in here in North County and you got kids, you're gonna end up here yourself. But Sky Zone, up in Carlsbad, you'll find almost everybody's gonna have a birthday party up there. But it kind of pairs a few things right here in San Diego. You got Sky Zone, family activities, that kind of stuff. Right next door is Carlsbad Brew Co. So <laughs> the, our friends actually, they had their kids, they dropped them off there. They have this, um, I think it's Fridays, where you can drop them off. Obviously you pay the fee, they feed them, they take care of them for three hours. And then you can hop right next door, go enjoy some dinner, hang out, and then pick them up afterwards. So. Anyways, you're gonna find a lot of that all around here in San Diego, and it's one of the reasons I love it. Lifestyle is great. Obviously, we went over weather, went over the growth, went over kind of the exploring, everything you could check out out here and new things to explore. Seems like all the time, but if you guys are thinking about moving out here, you got some questions, hit us up. Call, text, email. We got your back when making the move here to San Diego.